Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Messiah is good. He's worthy to be praised. His mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Today, very simple message, and it is basically that we should be one in the Holy Ghost. We should be one in the Holy Ghost. We should be able to commune in the Holy Ghost. And um, so, you know, if the hand says I'm not a part of the body, if the eye says I'm not a part of the body, even the most weakest points, the scriptures say, make up the body. We all, it all is a functioning thing. The same with the body of Christ, the body of Hamashiach. You know, we all need each other in some way, form, or fashion. And so there's no big eye, little you. The scriptures say iron sharpens iron. You know, so, you know, that's why we should all be one and be able to commune in the Holy Ghost, you know. Some are, some are just on the milk of the word. Some are on the meat of the word. Some are just babes in Christ. Some are, are, are full age and seasoned. And somehow or another, we have to intertwine that and bring that together as, as, as the body of the Most High, the body of El Elyon, the body of the Messiah, of HaMashiach, okay? And so that's the basic, basic message for today is that we should be uh, able to come together, commune as one, be on one accord, as the Bible says. And some of us, the ministers of the Most High, uh, we go through so much, but it's really for your glory, for you to be strengthened for God's glory. So it's for you to be strengthened, and it's for God's glory, and that He will get the praise. And then one plants, <clears throat> and the other waters, and Elohim gets the increase. So uh, that's how it is. One sow a seed, someone else will come by and water. I may sow a seed. You may say, I heard that uh, message before in the scripture. Uh, you know, I heard that somewhere else. That's somebody coming to water. And eventually, you know, God will get the increase. Elohim will get the increase as he builds you up. As we were speaking on last week, growing in grace. And we talked about, uh, well, the past couple weeks, growing in grace. And uh, also perfect. Because sometimes people think, you just think you holier than thou. That guy thinks he's holier than thou. That girl thinks she's holier than thou. Look at that brother. Look at that sister. And it's not that. We just understand what the scripture says when it says, be ye perfect as Christ is perfect. Perfect your faith. Perfect holiness. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord. So it's not trying to be perfect, although some we do see people trying, I'm perfect. I'm I'm so religious and I'm so this. No. What did the sinners, what, what the sinners pray? All he said was, I'm a sinner. You know, he didn't go through what the other uh, other man was talking about. I'm not like this guy and all that. He just said, the other guy just said, I'm a sinner. And even on the cross, the one the one uh, robber said, Lord, remember me. That was a simple prayer. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. The other was like, save us. You know, so, uh, again, we should be able to commune with each other in the Holy Ghost. And, um, and like I said, even though those ministers of Christ, of Messiah, go through for your behalf. You know what I mean? For your behalf. So. You don't know what we're going through. Like the scriptures say, ye that live godly shall suffer persecution. The scriptures also say persecution comes because of the word. Just having the sword, the, the double-edged sword of the spirit of the Holy Ghost or the word in you. But we should be able to commune in the Holy Ghost. Let's go to the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. So be it. And he that have an ear hear what the spirit is saying. And, you know, if you do not know uh, the most high, the Messiah, and the pardon of your sins, it's very simple. It doesn't cost anything. I'm certainly not here. Uh, people, you know, according to Psalm 145, the next 145 people, give me $145. You're going to get your blessing in 145 days. All this kind of, you know, preaching for, you know, this is just, it's not right. I'll just bring a word, just a simple word, and that's it. It's not a pastoral ship it's not a church it's not a thing about funds or anything else it's just uh, fruit for the kingdom you know and and planting seed again someone else will water god get the increase as the earth remain there always be seed time and harvest right but people twist them scriptures up for monetary reasons and you're gonna have to, you're gonna pay a price all right you don't want to lead the people astray so here we go we should be able to commune in the holy ghost you know, it's no, it's no, this person, this, and that person is that. The student is not above the teacher. Nobody's above the master. The scriptures say you should call no man master or father or rabbi except the Messiah. Anyway, let's get, let's get to this. Second Corinthians chapter 13. This is the third time Apostle Shaul, holds Apostle Paul speaking. This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be 
he established. I told you before and foretell you as if I were present the second time, and being absent, now I write to them which hereto have sinned, and to all other that if I come again, I will not spare. Apostle Paul saying, look, y'all need to Y'all need to chill with the sinning, because the next time I come, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to spare. And this is what Paul is saying. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. See, people want to, oh, let's see if how deep he is. Do he really know, you know, the Messiah? Does Christ really speaking in him? Is he, you know, is he real? Is he a real prophet? Is he a real uh, apostle? Is he a real, you know? Well, really, there's only 12 apostles, but you got people walking around saying they're apostles. And it, it's a lot of things going on and this is why the unsaved don't even want to come to church because it looks like a big like i used to say a circus you know you got things you got you got the things that are of the fruits of the spirit but you got people imitating the gifts that's another sermon you got people imitating and some people just can see right through it and they're like you know what i don't want to go to church i don't want to go to your church i don't want to go and we you know people that are doing this need to stop that you need to be real about it you know what i'm saying you know, because you're messing, you're messing with the babes in Christ. You're messing with people's minds, people's spirits. You know, they're really, really reaching out to you. They really want salvation. They really want a word from the Most High. They really want deliverance. But you got people, you know, uh, doing things for just monetary causes, and that's a big price to pay. Messing with the Messiah's sheep. Second Corinthians thirteen four. For though he was crucified through weakness, we're talking about the Messiah, yet he liveth by the power of Elohim. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of Elohim towards you. See, the ministers, we are, we are weak in the Messiah because we're always going through something. But yet we, we're strengthened by the power, you know what I mean, uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, okay, okay, so 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves. That's like we said when we have communion, let a man examine himself, you know, because we can't get too cocky and prideful and think we this or that. You know, Paul said, not that I've apprehended, but I pressed to the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ. Not, he ain't saying, not that I got it all. But, you know, some people walk around, they're the greatest theologian ever walked the earth, you know. So anyway, here we go. It said, prove your own selves. That's what we need to do. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ, you know, or, you know, Yahweh HaMashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. The reprobates are somebody that just backwards can't get it. You know what I mean? They just, they, they, won't, be, they, un, they won't be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Corinthians 13, 6. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. We're not reprobates. We're coming at. We're coming to you despite the way you see us beat down, broke down, weak, going through situations just for your behalf. And you ought to be grateful. You ought to be praising the Messiah, not us. Because no flesh going to glory in the Messiah's presence. Now I pray to Elohim, this God, that ye do no evil. Don't do no evil. Not that we should appear approved. See, I don't have to appear like I'm approved. I don't have to show you this is, you know, this is that I could get stuff together. Say, hey, look, this, this this happened on such and such a date. This this graduated from such and such ministry. All that. that that's it's not even all that because we're bringing the word to you, and ye are epistles read of men. So as much as we pour the the the, the, the word in you and the washing of the word in you, when people see you, and they see you changed, and they realize not our glory but the Messiah's glory, the Most High gets the glory. They can just see. That's when we say, let your light so shine. So, you know, some people seek a proof, like, like Paul was saying early in this passage, the Second Corinthians 13, 3, since he seek a proof of Christ speaking to me. Some people just want to, you know, they just want to judge. You know, the Bible say he that spiritual judge of all things. So there's things about things we can judge, but some people just want to judge with a measure, and that same measure going to be upon them when they be judged that way. But you got to remember, there's haters everywhere. I preached a message before. There's a Judas in every camp. That's why we always say it's going to always be one. Because there's always one devil got to show up and try to mess up. But God gets the glory, huh? Hallelujah. You know what I mean? The Holy Ghost comes in. The sword of the Ruach comes in and cuts that mess up out of here, right? For the angel didn't bring a, a, a real accusation to himself, right? Wasn't that what the scripture said? He just said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He didn't get all into Satan, the Satan, Yah rebuke you. Satan, Emmanuel rebuke you. Satan, the Most High rebuke you. You know, get behind thee, Satan. Isn't that what the Messiah said? Second Corinthians 13. Let's get back in it. And verse 8. Second Corinthians 13, 8. For we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. I, I can't do nothing against the truth. <laughs> I, I'm only rocking with the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. For, for to the Messiah, it's what? He's the truth, the way, and the life. Hallelujah. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. 
2 Corinthians 13, 9, for we are glad when we are weak. I'm glad when I'm weak and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even unto, even your perfection. See, we're still wishing your perfection. See, not be perfect. See, people that are not saved, they see a, a person, they say, this guy thinks he's so perfect. It's not that. We're trying to perfect holiness. We're perfecting um, faith. We're trying to perfect a good work. We're not trying to be, but some people, I do understand what you mean because you do see them. Just, Where are you going today? I'm going to church. I'm going to church today. You know, they just too, you know, too religious for me. Even Apostle Paul said that when he saw them people running around a rock that said to the unknown God, he said, man, y'all don't even know what y'all worship. Y'all real religious. Y'all superstitions and everything else. All right, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 10. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness. Now, Apostle Paul trying to tell him, look, I'm writing this letter to you. You know, get it right. Because if I'm in your presence, I might have to rebuke, reprove, you know what I mean, and bring some correction with the sword of the Ruach. You ain't going to like that when I call the Holy Ghost to deal with that flesh. You know what I mean? So that's why, you you know, the scripture says, you know, don't grieve the ministers. You know what I mean? Because they watch for your soul. Otherwise, that's unprofitable for you. That's the scripture. Okay, so here we go. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 10. Yes, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me. See, the power is given to edification and not to destruction. You got higher people in, in, in some churches. They're using their power. For this, to destroy people, you know what I mean. God not gonna call you out of this church. He don't call you. You know he could have called me out your church because there's some foolishness going on, and that's why I'm in this church or have my own church or whatever the case. For those that go through different, I'm just giving examples, and then people say, "Oh, we gotta go get get the intercessors and we gotta pray against them. A spirit done come over them, and now you got these high up people praying witchcraft, manipulation, and all these things upon you." I'm talking to somebody that been through all that kind of church hurt and stuff. Been there, done that a good half a dozen times. Not saying all, but again, we want to think about the babes. You're doing some things, you're not even doing, you're taking scriptures out of context. And it's not to destroy people, it's for edification. You know, when you see that somebody is in the Most High, you see you got a good servant, a faithful, loyal person that comes to, 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 to worship with you. You don't chop them all down and try to, you know, unless they're in sin, unless they're in their flesh, unless they're operating like Satan in your church if they're not why are you why are you trying to be so super overpowered and, and you're just, you're an overseer you're not somebody that's, that's trying to be a hard taskmaster don't we have enough to go through shouldn't we be able to have a safe haven in the church mm. that's why the church is the body of christ because he said he don't dwell in a, a buildings made by hands but we got to stop this beating up people and all that kind of you know you better you better start loving what the scriptures say this is how you know you are my disciples that you have love for one another 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. As Apostle Paul saying, he's writing the letter saying farewell. Here he goes again. Be perfect. He's not talking about that. Be perfect. Like religious people. I'm so perfect. I don't do that. I don't listen to that. This is, we're not talking about that. We're talking about perfecting holiness, righteousness, perfecting your faith. Hallelujah. Because without, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's pretty deep. We went over that. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. And see, we just live in peace. The scripture says, as much as possible, live peaceably with all men. Greet one another with a holy kiss. A holy kiss. Not no unholy kiss that some of us doing, folk doing in churches. Not unholy. Holy kiss. Okay? It was a greeting. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, Yah HaMashiach, and the love of Elohim, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. So be it. The communion of the Holy Ghost, okay? Shalom. That's what we need. Whether weak, strong, I'm this or that, we need to be able to commune in the Holy Ghost. Come together in the Spirit. Lift holy hands together, you know, and have fellowship, have forgiveness, and above all, have faith toward God. Because whatever is not faith is sin. That's what the scriptures say. Love you all. Shalom to you all. Peace be unto you.